it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Road Rash 64 on the N64. I played this many, many, many years ago and I wasn't overly impressed, so uh, we'll see what I think of it now. Um, there we go. Because why not? Bikes, we get to... Do moto? Is, is that like a cross between a Ducati and a motor guzzy? I have two thousand pounds, dollars. Okay, I'm kind of more interested in handling than most other... Oh, it's that rat? No, I don't want a bike like that. I do not like bikes like that, so... Okay, we're going with that then. And mainly because it's red. Win some races and me blah blah blah. Okay, cool. A yes. Race one. Milk run. First prize, six hundred things. Wish to now. Yeah, I've got a rumble pack, but I've got no batteries in it, so we won't bother with that. I do hope the. Br okay. Uh, control. Okay. Oh, it's that trigger control to accelerate. I don't know what any. All oh, right. That does that. Do I? Okay. I've got a, well it looks like a tyre iron. I, it's handling better than I remember, or maybe what I remember playing wasn't this. Road Rash 3D was it actually that I played, was that on the PS1? I don't know. This is actually not handling, but, oh, bonked by big J Big Jim has bonked me, and without my consent. <laughs> that's, that's, you don't expect that kind of thing in a video game. <sighs> yeah. No, we're not going to, we're just not going to go there. That's... Ah, duh. Mm. I am, I'm liking this. Um, questionable use of wordage. Yeah. <laughs> Call it what it is, he smacked me in the face with a tyre iron. Where did I get second? That's pretty cool, actually. A to continue. Arse. Because that's me. Oh, God. A second. Cool, let's go some more. Uh, we don't want to. Yeah, this, I mean, it has got your standard Nintendo um, Super Smero vision. Copyright Demez. <laughs> um, hit someone. Okay, whoops! I nearly ran into a copper. Do you get points for smacking people? I do hope so. I don't know what you get for hitting the copper in the face with the... It's... Ooh! Oh God! Oh! Go away! Where is the first place rider and how did he get that far ahead? Or she even? Oh! Oh God! Yeah, I'm liking this. Um... It's interesting because original Road Rash had a certain character to it um, that I really liked. You had it on the Mega Drive, certainly the first two games. You had it on the 3DO, and I really liked that sense of character, and on the PS1. Put my hands up, don't be silly, I'm holding a pair of handlebars. Um, the character of this is different, it feels more like a uh, Road Rash Jailbreak, is it, on um, on the GBA? No, I will not. Oops. Oof. Well, that's just... <laughs> it's, it's different. It's got that um, kind of low-rider, Hell's Angel sort of feel to it that is slightly different. 
Um, but it doesn't spoil the game. It's actually... I was expecting something more aligned to Road Rush 3D, which was a, an abomination and never... They, they just got it completely wrong. But while this is using... I believe it's... Is it using 3D models? I think it is. Uh, uh, it works. It's, it's really good. The handling... Oh, God. The handling is good. The humour is there. It's completely irreverent. Um... Um, yeah, I, why though, and it's, it, oh, god bloody hell, <laughs> never mind bite my ass, ass bit it, okay, um, Every day seems to be a gloomy, miserable, overcast day. This is a thing with the N64, with their fogging. But could they, like, make it a misty day with bright sunshine, please? Because if you suffered from seasonally affected disorder, a game like this could make you seriously depressed. Because <laughs> it's so gloomy. Uh, and that's true of an awful lot of Nintendo 64 games, really. It's it's a Nintendo 64 thing. It's true of many games, and it's true of this. It's a shame. Um, okay. I keep going for that button. Don't Oh, okay. All that and I haven't really used those. Oh, no. We'll just keep. I've got no tire. What, what happened to my? Where'd my tire iron go? Oh, get off! Okay. I must have nicked it. Get off. I know part of Norton Kings that looks like that. Oh god. We're here we are. We're coming up to the city centre now. Oh Jesus! Okay, physics. It's got physics. That's impressive, I like that. And now we're right at the back. We're coming into um Conneborough. Okay, ninth to first in one easy move. Cool. Let's go to the cinema. I'm sure it's this way. It does. It. Milton Keynes. There are bits of Milton Keynes that look an awful lot like this, except without the curved road because they're all they're on a grid system and all the roads are straight. Which, if you're on a motorbike, is really bloody boring. You want corners. I haven't been there in years. I really want to go there again just to visit. Nice place to visit. Wouldn't want to live there, though I did for like. 30 years and then some race five I'm not sure how many races you get but I I'm enjoying this a lot it's it's okay that's that's a break then what's that this is not Milton Keynes Looks more like uh, downtown San Andreas, maybe. Or perhaps one of the more dodgy bits of Northampton. Oh, yeah, bugger. Get off. Get back. Get get D back there. And stuff. Whoops. There is the inclination to just be constantly pressing the uh, the attack button. Regardless of whether there's a... Hey, that guy's got a mace. No. Will not. People seem incredibly resilient when it comes to being hit in the face with an iron bar. Oh, I want his... Mace. 
and a suit of armor. That would be good. Yeah, I think we're in Sheffield. We're going to Sydney World. Yay! Race first, race six. I'm just gonna, I'm not worrying about going to the bike shop and buying bits and stuff and things. I'm just gonna keep on going until I don't know something happens and we can't keep on going anymore. like that there's a variety of different kinds of good lord, different kinds of bike. I mean on the original Road Rash it was sports bikes and that was it. But here you know you've got you've got sports bikes, you've got choppers, you've got what are probably what my brother would call cafe racers. I don't know if that's oh, God that's a big club. Oh Jesus Christ That hurt my virtual body is in pieces. And they're not all connected to each other. You do get used to the smear of vision after a while. Um, it's kind of funny actually. I've. The last. Actually, it was a it was a SNES game because you get the Smiro vision on on many Nintendo consoles. <laughs> Certainly on the N sixty four and the the SNES, it's something I've always been aware of. They just have this kind of fuzzy feel to them. Um, and I came to editing my last video, which was a SNES game, and um, I was looking at the video and thinking, my camera's out of focus. But yeah, well, have we got enough for that? Oh, I, can't, I haven't got enough for that. No, I have. I'm looking at the. I'm confused. Yeah, we'll have that. What? Okay, yeah, whatever. No, I'm going solo, sod it. Welcome to level two, thank you. It's nice to get welcomed to parts of the game. If you wish to blah, blah, blah. I was saying something and I've forgotten what it was. Yes, I, I, I was editing and I thought my camera was out of focus, but I wasn't. It was just the quality of the video from the console. It's a little fuzzy, but I took it as being blurred. And I suppose... Whoops! Okay, that's not the right way, is it? Where... Oh, God. That's not what you want to do. Get up! I suppose if you had gone from a SNES to an N64 and not touched any other console, you would be blown away by the 3D, the smooth frame rate, which it has got, which is really, really good. Um, and the fogging would actually maybe impress you. You might think, wow, that's a really good visual effect. You know, weather, uh, not reduced distance rendering um, but coming to an N64 from a PS1 which while it's all jaggy and whatnot, you, you, oh God, you get used to that you, you just okay going from the sharp graphics of the PS1 to an N64 is quite a shock. Um, I know the anti-aliasing was considered an advanced feature, but I actually think it's a bit rubbish and and just blurry. Probably looks a whole lot better with one of those expansion packs, so you can run the games in higher res. But then the frame rate suffered. So I read. I've never actually seen a real. N64 game running with the with the memory expansion, so I don't know what they're like. I know they look great in emulation, but that's not the same. I think I'm probably not going to complete this level because 
I'm not concentrating on talking too much, but you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I probably ought to use the brakes in some of these. Pl oh God, places. And that's not the button I want. <laughs> I was pushing a. I was pushing the B button. Or oh, oh, for God's sake. Do not enter. I want to. Yeah. I'm going to call it a day there because I'm just like, I'm losing it. I like it. I like it quite a lot. And I can forgive the smearage and foggy graphics because it's an N64 and that's just what they did. The game is great. Uh, by level 2 it's significantly harder as you can see and you do need to pay more attention than I can pay whilst going blah. Um, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't let that put you off. Certainly level one, I had a lot of fun there. Uh, it's, it's impressive. And I was expecting, because I was remembering Road Rash 3D, and I thought that was pretty awful, and I thought this was going to be like that, and it's not. This is great. Okay, thank you for watching. Hello, today's question for Q&A is from Tripcore. And here, a uh, link to his channel down there, he asks, For Q&A, what percentage of your physical game collection have you played, and how does that make you feel? That's a good question, and I like the way you say physical game collection, so... We're not including the stuff that I've got on Everdrives, I presume. Stuff that I've actually got genuine original discs, discs cartridges, uh, floppies and the like. Short answer is, I have no idea, um, but I'm going to say I have probably played about, it's somewhere between <laughs> um, 30 and 70 percent. That's pretty vague, isn't it? Mainly because I don't know. Um, I've got a lot of cassette games that I haven't played, where... Most of my floppy disks that I've got, say, for the Amiga, I've played. Um, most of the stuff for the PS1, PS2, PS3, um, Dreamcast Originals. I've got a, a lot of um, backups, shall we say, that I, I was given a big folder full of them, and I haven't played all that many of them. Um, but I'm going to stick to Originals. Yeah, that makes it easier. Um, let's say half, because 30 to 70 percent is such a really wide, you know, I, I, I don't know. But yet, I, there are a lot, quite a lot, that I haven't played, and I can't honestly tell you if I've got more that I haven't than I have, but we'll say 50 percent. How does that make me feel? Um... I, I can live with it. <laughs> the thing is, it's I haven't got any games that I have bought myself where I said, I want that game, here's my money, um, that I haven't played. Anything that I have consciously made a choice myself to buy that game, I've played it. I'm not one of these people who who is like... Uh, Video games like Pokemon, gotta buy them all. No, because I'm not a collector of games, I'm a collector of hardware. So if I bought a game, it's because I want to play that game. Um, I have got an awful lot of games that I haven't played because I've accumulated them. Maybe they came bundled with a piece of hardware, because you get that a lot on eBay. It's like, here's a, here's a Mega Drive and here are two dozen cartridges with it. And maybe a large proportion of those cartridges, I don't give a damn about. I, I don't care how many different versions of FIFA there are. The only one I care to play is the very first one, and the rest can get stuffed. I'm not going to play them. Um, so I've got a lot like that that I've just never played. Sometimes I would buy a bundle of games because there was one game I wanted that was really hard to get hold of and the only way of getting it was part of a bundle. But I wouldn't buy a massive bundle for one game. 
but you know maybe three or four or five if it wasn't too expensive and they didn't want to split them so I do end up with I would say I sometimes end up with duplicates um, I tend to give my duplicates away <laughs> it's a long time since I've been to replay but the last time I went to replay I took a carrier bag full of duplicates and when I was like bumping into friends off of YouTube I was like here I've got these have, have a rummage if you see anything you want take it uh, which was cool because God knows people have given me enough stuff over the years so you know paying it forward something like that it's a phrase I'm not overly familiar with but I know that seems to be the right one um, yeah so I don't I don't feel bad about having games that I haven't played because I'm not I'm not hoarding, I'm not saying I must have all of these, I must have them and let me put them on the shelf and don't they look cool. No, they're sitting in a box, like there. Um, I have fewer than I used to that are sitting in a box because when I moved out of Andrea's place and moved in here, I had to... Um, well, some went to a charity shop because I literally did not physically have space here. None that I was given by YouTubers went to a charity shop. It's like, I know I know the ones that are important to me and they're all here. Um, but you know, some of the stuff that I accumulated off of eBay it went to a charity shop. Um, which kind of broke my heart in a way, but then on the other hand, all of those were ones I wasn't going to play. They were ones that, like, these are just going to stay in a box and they're just going to take up space and collect dust and for what? So someone else had the opportunity to buy them cheap, I trust, um, and play them. Yeah, I'm not one for hoarding them. I will hoard hardware. Well, I say hoard. I don't want to have billions and billions and billions of the same model of one particular system, but I'll have like four spectrums because they're four different spectrums and Atari 2600s and whatnot. But when it comes to software, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm actually not buying new game. Well, I'm not buying games. I'm not going on eBay and buying stuff. As you're probably aware by now, uh, EverDrives. I'm really getting into the whole... Um, downloaded ROMs on a cartridge, play it on your console, because I'm not I'm not inclined to spend money on something I'm going to play once for the sake of making a video. That's not really what I'm about. I'm not spending money on retro gaming at all, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think, what have I... I've got one or two games on disc for various of the slightly more recent systems. PS2 and PS3 come to mind. I've got one or two games for those that I've not played yet. And I say yet, yeah, I, I do actually intend to play them because I like the more modern stuff. It's still, it's, it's, I feel investing time in it is worthwhile. Where um, I'm not inclined to invest the time it takes to load a game off of cassette these days. Which is why things like the, um, what's it called, penultimate cartridge on the VIC-20 are so damn good. You know, and the SD to IEC kind of things, you know, where well, you load stuff off of SD cards onto retro computers. Love all that stuff. Um, because I haven't got the time for tape loading these days. Uh, yeah, even though I'm not doing the, um, the, the, the photography course anymore. I'm still time limited. I am working and I also have to be places like go and look after my dogs in the daytime as well. Um, time is limited. So things like that, tape loading, no time for it. So yeah, quite a lot of tapes sitting in boxes. I've kept ones that mean something to me and that is still quite a lot. And have I played them all? No. <laughs> But I don't feel bad about that. No, not really. There is a certain satisfaction to spending some time playing a game um, that I've never played before, that I've maybe had for years. And I've got some games that I've had for a long time that have never been played yet. 
and so when I do get the time to play one it's like yeah that was time well spent even if it turned out not to be a great game it's still satisfying mm. okay I think that covers that so uh, if you've got a question you'd like answering in a video like this do leave your question in the comments below uh, begin with for Q&A so that I know not to answer in the comments okay thank you for watching right hit the subscribe button or I'm getting naked on camera go on do it right you are for it ah, you are for it ah, ah, oh.